These are the Pro 4-3-2-1 custom tactics that I used to win a game at the E Premier League Grand Finals. This event was streamed to Sky Sports, TNT and even the official Premier League page. I'm going to talk you through each individual instruction and tactic. Let's get straight into the video. So, here we are with the team. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're only so good because of the team. No, that's not true. Well, it is a little bit. But also, a lot of these players are very meta. Now, these tactics will still work, even with a gold team. That's why I've been using them since day one of this FIFA. Now, as you can see, the team is very strong. There's a common theme here. They're all from the Premier League, past and present. People like Rude Hullet, obviously used to play in the Premier League, and Ginola too. They are now allowed in the E Premier League restrictions, where you can use current Premier League players and past. Now, let's get into the tactics. I'll talk you through some personnel, the formation, and the instructions. Let's go. So, custom tactics. Let's get straight into the action. Now, first things first, we're starting on balance. Now, there's a few things here. Drop back, very, very poor. Your team drops into your own box, and it's just an easy goal for the opponent. Constant pressure. You're going to need this later on in the video, so stay tuned. Same with press after possession loss. Heavy touch, not really as good as it used to be. So, we'll leave that unbalanced. Next up width you want this on about 40 you want your team to stay narrow um, and compact at the back you don't really need them to be wide even on attack in in fc24 so that's why we're leaving it on 40 anything between 40 and 50 is probably ideal depth depth's a bit of a different one 72 i've personally gone for because anything above 70 so 71 or 72 which is ideal is the lowest point you can put it at which makes your team auto offside trap now for casuals at home you won't really know how to offside trap using the D-pad. Now, that's down and then down again. It's very hard to master. It's quite easy to do just once, but it's hard to master and use in the right situations. Now, 72 depth is perfect for me. The team pushes up, which means you can press even harder than before. And your team's at a decent level. Like I mentioned with the drop back, if your team drops too, too low, it's just so easy for your opponent to pass the ball into your net. Or even pop a finesse or Travella from deep. On to the offense. Now, build up play balance. Now, it sounds very basic. This is what all pros use. I promise you that. You'll have seen similar tactics on YouTube before. These are the best, but all pros use the same sort of, you know, build up play, chance creation, and defensive style. So, we're going for balance again. Long ball used to be good on FIFA 20. There's a, there's a way you can use that. Fast build up. People are just running around. Like, it's not the best for, it's not the best style of play. Let's say slow build up awful doesn't even help when you want to play possession it's really bad speaking of possession we're going to chance creation now things like possession don't even help you keep possession do you know what i mean the team just sort of stands still and makes you easy to press direct passing is the best option for this now as it says team enters the attacking zone with possession players will create chances by making runs for passing to space behind the opposing back line Strikers who are fast with a good attacking position in attribute are the best at this tactic. Now, if you go on balanced, tactics used for maintaining its formation, support and make runs when they, when they think it's the right time to do so. So you're trusting the AI to be good. No, direct passing is the one to use. Trust me. That's actually a really good point. You know the, the, the writing you can see just there? It's very, very good. As you can see with the writing right now, this describes what it's going to do, okay? Adjust your defensive team shape to be high to help put pressure on your possession team, sorry. Your back line will be high and vulnerable for long balls in behind. Now, if you go under to 70, adjust your defensive team shape to be balanced to put your team in the middle of the pitch to try and win the midfield battle. So the wording's actually very important. You can actually see a lot of different things with the wording and pretty much just base it on how you want to play your style of football. Back to the width on the offensive side this time. The width's an important one because if you go too narrow, it's so easy for the opponent to just switch, switch, switch and get to your box in a pro game. However, in a casual game, that's not very much of an issue. People just run forward, right? So you can't really be too narrow, really. Like, a lot of pros played one width last year because it's just so compact. Like, if you can't get through me, that means you've got to go around me down the wing, which means you've got so many more chances to tackle them. So again, you want it between f maybe 30 and 50 on this one because imagine if you went to 100 width it would take time for your team to go from 100 width on attack to 40 on defense they're gonna have to come back but get narrower at the same time that's gonna be too hard um so yeah just keep it around the same maybe five up or five down from your defensive width players in box players in box is an important one as you can see another time where if you read this right in it will change 
how high it is or how low it is, right? The prime for this, number six. When in crossing zone, you'll have some players making runs to the penalty area if it's the right time to make the run. For example, if you're on eight, um, they're making a lot of runs, too many runs. So you're going to just be exposed at the back. Whereas if you come down to three, they're not even going to get in the box, right? You're just going to be sat on the edge, not knowing what to do. So go for about six. Anything in and around, that's quite good. Um, but for me personally, I like six. Corners two, that's a lock. Don't ever put three. Sometimes people used to put one back in the day, but not... Not now, because with number two, as you'll see on the screen, Haaland is stood in pole position, right? So you can do a near post corner or a quick scope corner, and he will be just ready to head it in straight away. There's also people like Van Dijk at the back post or Hullet in the area as well. It leaves the perfect amount of players in the box and the perfect amount outside. So you can play a short corner, go to the edge, or there's even enough players on, on the edge and on the halfway line to defend the counter attack. It's perfect. Free kicks is on two. Now this one's a bit up to you. I personally don't cross free kicks. I either shoot or take it short and finesse it. So for me, it's a bit like, yeah, I'm never really whipping it in. It's too like RNG based. So for that one, do what you like. On to the instructions. Now, this is how I set up in game, right? Even in the menus, to be fair. It's amazing. Okay. I'm going to talk you through why the 4 3 2 the best formation in the game and why the fullbacks are so, so important in this formation. A quick disclaimer, all three and five back formations which could possibly counter the 4-3-2-1 are banned from competitive play. And if you were thinking about using them anyway, you're a rat. Let's get back on with the video. So, first things first. This is how the team looks on attack. And this is how the team looks on defence. As you can see, this team defends in a 4-4-2, making you so compact and able to defend. Just like Sean Dyche, two banks of four and then two strikers up front. On attack, however, you've got three players pinning back the defence, meaning there's a man in between each defender, and then you've got the fullback on one side. So, for example, for mine, I've got the right back on balance. So, we'll go and look at that right now. We would usually start at the front of the instructions, but let me talk you through why the right back's on balance. Now, the right back's on balance and overlap. This is because he can get into this area and basically occupy the space, wait for the ball, and just stand there. Because we use the D-pad instruction, hug sidelines, which you may have seen on my shorts, he's basically going to try and get chalk on his boots. And if you don't understand what that means, he's going to stand on the white line of the pitch and just wait for the ball. This means that I can play the ball about with Havertz or Van Dijk and then switch it over to him uncontested. Another reason this can be good is if you trigger Rodri when you have the ball with company or Vieira and then get it across the pitch, you can hit that big switch of play manually using R1 and square. This will mean your player essentially manually hits a through ball at the perfect power. It's unstoppable. On to the left back. Now, the left back's a bit different because he's playing a different role. He's playing as one of the defenders, one of the back three, if you like, with Rodri then going up, right? Left back's on, stay back while attacking, overlap. Overlap's just the standard, you know, you don't want him to run inwards because then you may be exposed at the back. Um, but stay back while attacking. He's obviously still going to run up if I do trigger him myself, which I like to do from time to time. But for now, he's staying back there. Now, this is very important. The side that your balanced fullback is on, so for me, Rodri, you need to have a centre mid on. Stay back and cover centre. This means in the 4-4-2, he's going to act like an actual centre mid, right? So he's going to be the right centre mid in the 4-4-2. The centre centre mid is going to be De Bruyne on the same tactic, stay back while attacking and cover centre. Now, you could put one of them on balance if you want to be a bit quicker and attack let's say but if you want to dominate the game on the edge of the box both on stay back they'll be there ready for the ball to keep possession around the edge of the box moving like Pep Guardiola now the left center mid you're thinking it's the same right no balanced cover wing cover wings the very important one here because he's essentially going to be playing left mid on defense he's going to be transitioning from left center mid on attack and then shuffling over to left mid on defense now this is perfect because you've got left mid, a left centre mid, a right centre mid. But you're probably thinking, where's the right mid? That's where Henri comes in, the right forward. Now, Henri's on getting behind and come back on defence. Come back on defence is pivotal here, yeah? Because that's what makes him shuffle back into the right mid position. As you can see, this is how they're set up in-game. Basically, I'm trying to give the pro information into a casual's mind. Now, getting called a casual is not a roast. It's a compliment. Because being a pro at this game is very stressful. 
and hard and annoying. However, that is the midfield four's instructions. On to the strikers. Very important here. Hullet, central striker. Stay central, getting behind. Now, this one's pretty much locked in. They're getting behind on that. And stay central, just pretty much locked in. Like, use these. However, left forward. Stay central, getting behind again. Now, there's a few issues here. Getting behind, maybe take that off and maybe take stay central off because when the left forward's loitering at the left, you know, the back post, let's say. So imagine I've done that play I was talking about. Havertz to Rodri. Rodri's now got space to run into. Haaland's at the back post, by the way. Team of the year Haaland with gold aerial, okay, and 99 jumping. Hang it up at the back seat using L1 and square and Haaland will just leap like a salmon. He'll jump about eight, eight feet off the floor. Knock it down to your teammate and put it in the goal like me. Where you need to be aggressive in those one on ones where you feel like you've got the upper hand and you just take it off. That's the thing, it's a 1v2. So if in a 1v2, you gotta take risks because if not, if you play it like patiently, there's no chance of you defending it well. Rodri out wide, floating into the box. Howland will get up for it. Heads it Shut down, and he's onside. Red like and Nottingham Forest. So now you've seen that. That's how I scored one of my goals at the EPO Premier League. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Get it over to your right back who's on balanced. Hang it up and score that goal. It's very, very hard to defend. It's a bit ratty, but it's worth it. Now, the one thing you're thinking, what about the goalkeeper? Red lack. What about the goalkeeper, mate? Well, I've got the goalkeeper on balanced. I like to manually bring him out using Y and also double Y for when someone's going to cross or finesse or Traveller. Now, if you don't know how to do that, like I said, make sure to check out my shorts on YouTube. Um, that's pretty much where, you know, I'll be showing all types of tutorials and how to get better at the game. And also follow my Instagram, Alfie Calder. Now, that's the tactics and instructions. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be uploading all sorts of tutorials, tips and tactics videos in the near future. Leave a comment on what you want to see next and have a great rest of your day. Peace. Soon.